at the end of this module you will be able to understand when are two quantities said to be in inverse proportion conditions for two quantities to be in inverse proportion to find out the missing quantity when two quantities are in inverse proportion applications of inverse proportion in our day to day life look at the situation here we see a girl using different ways of going to school if she walks at a speed of 3 kilometers per hour she reaches school in 30 minutes now if she goes to school by running at a speed of 6 kilometers per hour she reaches her school in 15 minutes if she goes to school by cycling at a speed of 9 kilometers per hour she reaches her school in 10 minutes if she goes by car at a speed of 45 km per hour she reaches her school in 2 minutes in the situation when she walks at 3 km per hour she reaches her school in 30 minutes if she runs at 6 km per hour she reaches her school in 15 minutes if she uses her cycle and goes at a speed of 9 km per hour she reaches her school in 10 minutes when she goes in a car at a speed of 45 km per hour she reaches her school in 2 minutes so we see that when she increased her speed two times the normal speed the time taken decreases by half time if speed is increased by 3 times time taken decreases by 1/3 and if speed is increased 15 times then the time taken is decreased by 1/15 or we can also say that as speed increases time decreases in same ratio now we see that speed into time is same in all conditions so speed into time is constant a farmer first bought 5 horses he fed them with some corns the corn lasted for 15 days then he bought 3 more horses and he fed them the same amount of corns but this time the corn lasted for 10 days only what have we noticed as the number of horses increase the number of days the corn will last decreases ram had rupees 400 with him he went to a shop to buy notebooks cost of one notebook in the shop was rupees 20 so he bought 20 notebooks anil too had 400 rupees with him he went to another shop to buy notebooks cost of one notebook in that shop was rupees 25 so he was able to buy only 16 notebooks now what do we notice here we notice that the amount both of them had was the same but as the cost of notebook increased number of notebooks they could buy decreased look at this activity 12 marbles can be arranged in 6 rows and 2 columns now let the same 12 marbles can also be arranged in 4 rows and 3 columns 12 marbles can also be arranged in 3 rows and 4 columns now let us frame a table for the arrangement of marbles what do we observe as the number of rows r increases the number of columns c decreases also we see that r into c is constant in all the above situations we saw that as one quantity increases the other quantity decreases such variation that is increase in one quantity resulting in a decrease in the other quantity is said to be inverse proportion so two quantities x and y are said to be in inverse proportion if x into y is constant that is xy equal to k here are some situations that we face in our day to day life analyze each situation one by one and say what kind of proportions they are number of workers on a job and time taken to complete the job area of cultivated land and crop harvested the time taken for a fixed journey and speed of the vehicle the time taken for a journey 
and the distance travelled in uniform speed. Number of workers on a job and time taken to complete the job. Suppose 5 workers can do a job in 40 minutes. What will happen if 10 workers do the same job? It is sure that time taken will decrease. So, here we see that as the number of workers increases, the time taken by them to complete the work decreases. Hence, the situation that number of workers on a job and time taken to complete the job are in inverse proportion. Area of cultivated land and crop harvested. If we assume in a land of area 500 square meter, we can harvest 50 kilos of crop. It is sure that in a land of area 1000 square meter, we can harvest 100 kilos of crop. And also, in a land of 1500 square meter, we can harvest 150 kilos of crop. Hence, we notice that as the area of land increases, amount of crop harvested also increases. So, area of cultivated land and crop harvested are in direct proportion. If 15 workers can build a wall in 48 hours, how many workers are required to do the same work in 30 hours? Given 15 workers will do the work in 48 hours, so to do same work in less time, there must be more number of workers. So as the number of workers increases, time taken to complete the work decreases. So the number of workers and time taken are inversely proportional. Assume number of workers required to build the wall in 30 hours as Y. As the number of workers and the number of hours are in inverse proportion, we have 48 into 15 equals to 30 into Y. Now Y equals to 48 into 15 by 30. Doing simplification, we get Y equal to 24. So, 24 workers are required to build the wall in 30 hours. There are 100 students in a hostel. Food provision for them lasts 20 days. How long will these provisions last if 25 more students join the group? We can easily say that when number of students are more, then the food will last for less number of days. So, number of students and number of days the food lasts are in inverse proportion. Number of students who can eat for 20 days is 100. 25 new students join the hostel. So, the number of present total students equals 100 plus 25 equals 125. Now, let us assume the number of days the food lasts for 125 students as Y. As the number of students and number of days are in inverse proportion, we have 100 into 20 equal to 125 into Y. So, Y equals to 100 into 20 by 125. Simplifying, we get Y equal to 16. Therefore, for 125 students, the food will last for 16 days. In this lesson, you have learnt Two quantities, X and Y, are said to be in inverse proportion if an increase in X causes a proportional decrease in Y in such a manner that the product of their corresponding values remain constant. If X, Y equal to K, then X and Y are said to vary inversely.